Welcome to Flying Wheels and another video, and this one is titled, What Would You Do? So I own a car dealership, and owning a car dealership, man, it is freaking tough. There are a lot of battles and fires that I'm constantly putting out. Like I'm constantly fighting the battles and I'm constantly putting out fires. I know better than to buy Nissan Versas, but I did. And today's story is about this Nissan Versa, and I wanna know your opinions. How would you handle this situation, what would you do? So this is a 2013 Nissan Versa, four cylinder automatic, 138,000 miles. It is really, really clean. But guess what? Just like every freaking Nissan, it has a transmission issue. And although I should have known when I bought it, I did not know about it. So I bought it not knowing that it had a transmission issue. And obviously that is why it was at a dealer auction because some dealer didn't want to fix it so they ran it through the auction it has over a hundred thousand miles so it sold red light it sold as is too bad for moi now i'm going to give you a few scenarios about that car i've already made my decision and i will tell you at the end what i'm doing but what i really want to know is what would you do put yourself in my position as a car dealer as a business owner as a family person that has bills and I wanna know how you would handle this situation. Now, before I start, I wanna show you this car. This is a one owner, 2013 Nissan Versa, not a scratch, not a nick, not a mark or a dent on the entire car. It was really, really clean and it has a great vehicle history report. I have two keys and two remotes for it. And when you go on the inside, this is how clean it was when I bought it. Like it is retail ready already. Now I should have known and I do know better, but every once in a while I go against my gut and then I fail myself because I know better. Now Nissan used to make an amazing product. The Nissan Maximas and the Altimas and the Sentras and the 240s with their four cylinders and even their automatic transmissions were amazing vehicles in the 80s and 90s. They kept up with Toyota and Honda. But somewhere along the way, in the mid-2000s, they came up with this idea of, hey, let's make a CVT transmission, a constantly variable transmission that doesn't shift. It will be great for us. Wrong, 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 Nissan. You destroyed all of your products, all of your vehicles by making this decision, and you no longer are as reliable as Honda or Toyota. You are a terribly inferior product. And honestly, when I go to the auction, I walk away from every Nissan Murano, every Nissan Maxima, every Nissan Versa. You guys make an awful product. So if you engineers at Nissan are watching this video, shame on you. Shame. Because you make a disgustingly disappointing product. So much so that there was a class action lawsuit against you guys for your faulty inferior transmissions. It is ridiculous. Enough with rant. Let's get on with the what would you do. So I'm going to start the car. Now when I bought it, it drove through the auction. Okay, I am not faulting the dealer. He knew there was a transmission issue. He is allowed to run it through the auction. Red light. Caveat emptor, buyer beware, right? I should know better, I should have driven it, I should have test driven it, I, I should just know better, but again, I went against my gut, I bought it, I paid top dollar for it. And how much did I pay, you may ask? I paid a whopping $3,240 for this car. Why did I do it? Well, I'll tell you why I did it. Super sweet girl in town, she's 16, she was looking at a Honda Accord we had, she loved it, she wanted to buy it. Well, you know what? I just didn't feel comfortable selling it to a 16-year-old girl. It was older. I mean, it just wasn't like the right car for her. And I told her that. I'm like, there are better cars out there. Let me look around. Let me see what I can come up with. I know your price range. The problem is prices are really, really high right now. So anything in her price range is either old or ugly or beat up or needs work. Then I come across this 2013 Nissan Versa in her price range. Mileage, reasonable, 139,000 miles. So I'm like, you know what? I'll take the risk, I'll buy it for her. Anytime that happens, it backfires. I do not buy cars for people because what happens, I spend my money, I buy the car, has an issue or they don't want it, then I'm stuck with the car and my money's out there, gone. So I know better than that too. Like I just went against everything. I know, all of my better judgments. So I have no one to blame but myself. Now I bought this car, it went through the auction, it drove through the auction, it drove on the trailer, but I noticed when I put it in gear, it just 
delayed going into gear just a little bit. Watch what happens now. I might have put 10 miles on this car. We're gonna go ahead and put it in gear. I'm gonna rev the engine and nothing happens. I'm only rolling forward out of gravity. I'm gonna put it in reverse and at least it backs up into its spot. I, I was on the road and it died like right outside my shop. We had to push it down the road to get it here. Really a bummer. All right, let's get on to the what would you do because you know the story now. German, can I grab you for a video real quick about that Nissan Versa? Do you mind? I'm doing a what would you do. You know the scenarios, you know the options, and no decision's ever wrong, but I'd love to hear your opinion. That Nissan Versa, I bought it at the auction, I bought it red light, I bought it as is, okay? It needs a transmission now. Okay. The transmission, I have multiple options. We can get a used transmission for like 1500 bucks. Now we already know these transmissions are faulty. So if you get a used transmission, they come with like a six month or you can even pay for a 12 month warranty. It's gonna happen again, right? Apparently this problem has been corrected in new transmissions. So option one is buy a used transmission, throw it in and sell it. We paid $3,240 at a $1,500 transmission. We're into it for $4,700 plus fluids is another $300, our labor in house. So we'll own it for like $5,200. Okay, I have it listed for $59.95, so we can still make, like, after expenses, it's probably a break-even point. Okay, that's option one on a used transmission. Option two is run it back through the auction. Hang on, I'm itchy. Option two is run it back through the auction, red light, try to recoup as much as we can, and we'll probably take a loss, like maybe lose $500, maybe lose $800, but the headache's gone, it's out of our hair, no stress anymore, it's done. Option three, I call the transmission shop. They want to buy a remanufactured transmission from the Nissan dealer and install it. They want $4,800. So I'll own that car for about eight and change. Okay, that's option three. I should say also that paying the transmission shop to put in a remanufactured transmission for $4,800 isn't even an option because I, I can't own that car for $8,000 plus dollars. It's just almost $9,000, it's not realistic. I mean, I would lose way more doing that than I would running it through the auction, just taking a loss and do no work to it. I called my uh, parts manufacturer, okay? They can get me a remanufactured transmission for 2,800 and then we install it. That will save on labor, but we're putting a brand new transmission in a car, which is the right way. It'll have a brand new transmission. It's good, it has like a three year warranty on it. Option four, I called the Nissan dealer. Nissan wants $2,200 for a brand new transmission and then we install it. They have them in stock. That's how faulty they are. Like It happens so frequently that the Nissan dealer had them and said, oh yeah, we'll have it to you today if you want it with all the fluids. What's the transmission? $2,200? So we'll own it for about $55 plus fluids plus labor. So we'll own it for about six, which is what I'm asking for the car. So that's the break even point. So we do all that in break even. So we number one, run it through the auction and lose. Definitely. Number two, was what? We put a used transmission in, make a couple hundred bucks. Option three is out the window, like why buy a remanufactured when the Nissan dealer has one that's brand new for less money? So I guess the other option would be buy the brand new one from the Nissan dealer and then right. we install it. What would you go with? I would go with the used one. It still comes with a warranty, yeah. right? So it still comes with a warranty and you get a profit out of it. You make a profit, okay? I wanna know what you guys would do. Pause this video. Comment down below what you guys would do. When you're done pausing and writing the comment, I'll tell you what I did. And remember, there's really no wrong answer. Like, do you wanna lose money? Do you wanna make money? Or do you wanna break even? It's a business, like right. we're in business to make money, but some are mistakes. Sometimes you lose, you just have to win more than you lose. And that's how the there business stays afloat. All right, I'm gonna tell you what I did. We know your opinion. I hopefully know all of your opinions. Tell me below, cause I'm gonna read them all. Again, none is the wrong answer. I'm gonna tell you what I did. And it was an option, how many options do we have, four? Four. Option five. I didn't give you this option, okay? Someone came by, I looked at the car. I called them and I'm like, you know what? It has a transmission issue, I don't know what it is. It's common in Nissans. If you like it, I'll replace the transmission for you. It'll come with a warranty, okay? Come out and check it out, see what you think. He loves the car, all right? I told him, I said, listen, I, if I do a new transmission, it's gonna have a three-year warranty. I'm gonna sell it for 8,500. If you want it right now, and I'll do the transmission, you come back, you test drive it, 
I'll sell it to you for 6,500, okay? So 6,500 today, you commit, I'll sell it to you, I'll call you in two weeks when it's done, you test drive it, you like it, you pay the balance, you leave with the car with a brand new transmission and a warranty. He said yes, and he bought it, okay? So we actually made some money by doing that. We didn't break even, we didn't take a loss, we do have to do the transmission in-house, which I didn't tell Dave about yet, so he's in for a surprise. Usually, we run these things back through the auction. It's just easier, like, you gotta move things. You gotta move inventory, move it, move it, move it along. It's all about, it's a numbers game. So if we lose, I can use that money on a different vehicle. Like, that's typically the decision we make, which isn't a bad decision. Taking a loss sometimes, it's necessary, so you can move on, take your losses and move on. This one, we ended up, for once, not breaking even, not losing money, it worked out really, really well. Now, if the customer doesn't want it, I have a car that I'm gonna list with a brand new transmission for 8,500 in a really hot market that's really, really clean. Yes. That's what I'm. That's what I went with. Do you agree? Yes. Do you disagree? I think that was a good outcome. Now, that's a rare scenario, but yeah. it just happened to work yeah. out. Like, why would a customer not want a brand new transmission with a warranty for $500? A warranty costs $500. Right. He gets a brand new transmission and a warranty for 500 more. I think that's a score for him, a win for us. Yeah. And then if he doesn't like it, 8,500 for someone else, and then we really win. That's it. You good? That's good. Cool. You good? Cool. The only issue now is Dave has to do a transmission job. So that is what I mean when I say putting out fires and solving problems constantly, constantly, constantly. Like every one of these cars is a problem or has a problem that I need to find the solution for constantly. Then they sell, then I get more problems that I have to find the solution for. It's it's a constant battle, like it's really, really exhausting. And then if I don't find the problem and I sell the car, and then the buyer finds a problem and then calls me with a problem, and then I really have a problem. So this gig is tough. It's, it's a hard gig every once in a while, but there's profit to be made and sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's not fun. But the point was, I wanna put you in the position of the car dealer because we're not always bad i mean i, I want to do good i want people to have good cars and then good experiences and they're like that guy craig he's an all right guy i really like flying wheels they took care of me that's the ultimate goal that's the end goal i hope you guys told me your opinions because i'm gonna read them and i want to know like think about it this isn't an easy gig what would you have done thanks for watching if this video was at all entertaining informative educational anything if you hit the thumbs up button that helps me because it helps the algorithm boost the video. So just like thumbs up if it was at all interesting. If you love car content, subscribe down below. There's like a button somewhere around here that you can click. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Adios.